let's say we have a sand heap. Right? Let's say we have a heap of sand. Sand, the total weight of, weight of which is coming out to be capital M. Right? Okay. Now, let's say it contains N particles. I don't know. It could be 10 to the power 20. It could be 10 to the power 30. It could be a random number as well. I don't know. I've just considered a symbol for it. N. Let's say the mass of each sand particle, the well, sand usually, you know, has impurities as well. So let's just say hypothetically that each and every particle of this sand here is exactly identical to each other. So all the sand particles are exactly identical and the mass of any sand particle per se is going to be small m. With that logic, we can easily say that, you know what? capital N into small m is equal to capital M. Capital N multiplied by small m is equal to capital M. Okay. Moving forward, then again, we have our friendly mechanical equilibrium, which we love so much. Let's do one thing. Let's pick a single sand particle. Last time around, in rever irreversible, we placed the entire brick. This time around, instead of that, let's take a single sand particle. A single sand particle, when dropped, might not cause a lot of compression. It will not, to be honest, right? So if you look here, let's look at it again, right? Like you over here, you will barely see the piston moving. However, if you see over here to the other side, inside the magnifying glass, you will see a slight compression, right? You will see that there is indeed, you know, a slight compression, correct? This indeed compression, this dV compression is indeed there, right? Piston slightly moved, okay? Now, think about it external pressure that caused the compression was equal to P atmosphere, which was already applying plus small m, the mass of one sand particle, that is mg by a, small m, right? mg by a. This we have done before, but we did for an entire brick. Right? So this is what we have. Okay? Now, if the external pressure, right, the external pressure, what happened? Let's say before the sand particle was placed, right? So before the sand particle was placed, the external pressure was P atmosphere. Then what happened? We dropped a single sand particle on top of it. So external pressure increased. Before that, what happened was, before that, the internal pressure and the external pressure, they were same. So, mechanical equilibrium was there. All of a sudden, what you have done is, you have dropped a grain or a single particle of sand on top. And so, because of that, you have increased the external pressure. You have increased the external pressure. Now, since you have increased the external pressure, what will happen? the volume will decrease. We saw the compression, the dV compression. Because of these dV compression, since the volume of the gas inside reduced, since the volume of the gas inside reduced, the pressure of the gas inside increased. Isothermal. Isothermal has the condition PV is constant. right? So if the gas inside, the volume decreased even by a tiny bit, the gas inside pressure increased. And now the piston is stationary again, even after you have dropped the grain of sand. Why is the piston, you know, moved a bit, then stopped? Why did it stop? Because the gas inside, the teeny tiny increase in pressure. Listen again, because of the teeny tiny compression, the teeny tiny increase in internal pressure has made it equal to the new external pressure, which is the atmospheric pressure and because of the grain of sand. I 
Understood? Right, so this is what we have. Now, point is, at after the compression, when the piston has then again stopped, the P, ex, the P gas has then again become equal to the external pressure, the new external pressure, right? The new external pressure. And what is that equal to? That is equals to P ATM plus small mg by A. Okay. You know what? Let's go forward, right? Let's try to ascertain what will be the work done in this tiny step. That will be the P external during this tiny step multiplied by the tiny volume change. What is this? P ATM plus mg by A. What is this dV? And this we have the negative as usual. This is the work done between the first stage of compression. Sir, which first stage of compression? You didn't tell us that there's going to be more stages. Well, obviously they are going to be, right? We took an entire heap. Why would we take an entire heap if we meant to drop only a single sand particle? So, that takes me to the next step that now the external pressure has become after the addition of second sand particle p atm plus mg by a which was the previous one plus another mg by a because of the second sand particle so the p external has now become p atm plus 2 mg by a and once the piston further compresses, further comes to rest, the P gas will also become equal to that. But before, when the second particle was just placed, the internal pressure was P atm plus 1 mg by A before it was placed. Right? As it was placed, it was still, right? It was still P gas initial was equal to what? P ATM plus 1 mg by A. And when the compression happened, after the compression at the new mechanical equilibrium, it became equal to P ATM plus 2 mg by A. Right? And what is the graph on the right hand side denoting? That is then again denoting dV. Right, this dv, this 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 teeny tiny dv, right, multiplied by p atm plus mg by a. Then for the other one, p atm plus two mg by a. And now, in a similar fashion, look here it is the mathematical part of it, right? You don't have to write it down; it will be provided to you. Chill out, just try to understand. And don't get, you know, so scared by all of these, uh, you know, ugly expressions and calculations. They will not come in the examination. Examination will have a very beautiful, simple formula, which we will derive towards the end. But for to understand the process and the intricacies, to understand where the question tricks you, where you cannot just apply the formula. To understand which formula to apply where, we need to go through this entire analogy. Okay. So, this is basically what we have. Now, similarly, let's say we started dropping one by one by one by one by one all the sand particles. Think about the last particle, right? So, last particle, before the addition, before the addition, this would have been your external pressure, right? The last term here would have been n minus 1th particle, right? And then you added the nth particle, the last particle, and the weight because of that added and divided by area, the pressure increment, what we observed. The compression, the final compression happened. And then again, mechanical equilibrium was established and the P gas became equal to this. Okay, so this is essentially what we have. Now, think about it. what is this? It says M plus M plus M plus M plus M plus M plus M. All those M 
the entire weight of the sand heap that you had taken. What is this equal to? N particles, each of weight small m. So this can also be written as P A T M plus capital M G by A. Can it? Yes, indeed. Now, the point is the work in the last stage is equals to what? P A T M plus capital M G by A multiplied by D V and then a negative negative sign at the front. And if you have a lot of steps, that means that your number of particles were quite large. But if you have a finite amount of sand, right, instead of drop, if you have, you know, uh, let's say, if you have, let's say, uh, you know, uh, let's say, 5 kgs of sand, if you wanted to drop that in 5 steps, you would be dropping 1 kg of a sand mold or sand rock, step 1. Two, say, second, 1 kg more, second step. Third, you would conjure up another or make by your hands third sandstone and drop that third step and so on and so forth, right? So the total weight is still 5 kgs. The number of particles is 5. The mass of an individual sand rock is 1 kg. But let's say I told you I want this to be done in 100 steps. But the total sand available to you is still those 5 kgs. So if this remains the same and this has been asked to increase, obviously this decreases no. Individual, right? In an individual step, then you are dropping very, very less mass over there. If you're dropping very less mass over there, you can expect that in the uh, you know sand rock of 1 kg, a significant compression would be there. In a sand particle over there, teeny tiny compression would be there. So when we do that, right, this graph takes a somewhat, somewhat of a smooth shape. But let's try to understand why that is so. Let's say, hypothetically, say, increase the number of steps to infinity. Infinite number of particles. That means... That means, right, in fact, number of steps, n here means number of steps. And we know that if number of steps is infinity, then n tends to infinity. What is the n? Number of sand particles. Now, if the total sand is limited and the capital N over here has been tended towards infinity, that tells me that this is very, very large number. This is fixed still to be our initial assumption of 5 kgs. So the individual particle has to be really small. Very, very small. In that case, in that case, the compression of a sig single stage, dv, will be tending towards 0. Right? Right? In fact, you can look over here. Right, this, 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 this still has a, you know, quite a big value. Let's say divide this dv, let's say divide this dv by a billion or even more. That is what I'm talking, talk, trying to talk about. Very thin layer of compression. And if I sum all of these up, stack all of these together, you know, billions and billions and billions of these lists. I get the total delta V compression. Why? Why are we doing that? Get that. In the next session, when we differentiate between reversible and irreversible, for now, what this turns out is that we get a very smooth curve. Why? Because the height between the buildings has become negligible. Why? What was the height difference between the buildings? Mg by A, no, because one was P ATM plus Mg by A, second was P ATM plus 2 Mg by A, third was P ATM plus 3 Mg by A. So this distance has become negligible because M, small m is tending towards zero. 
also because of the very same reason dv is tending towards zero so this is also tending towards zero right but then somebody is like why isn't the graph collapsing because there are infinite number of steps giving you an overall finite volume compression okay cool 